There is something unique about the muscle car. They were built by nearly every manufacturer, and their identification badges bragged about their performance pedigree. Some were outlandish exercises in extreme styling, while others preferred a more secretive stealth approach. What they all shared was a brute horsepower and an appetite for speed, two traits that earned them a home on Topcoat's magnificent machines. Welcome to Top Coat's Magnificent Machines. We're back at the American Muscle Car Museum for a second week, and this time, we're going all Chevrolet. There are some really cool Chevrolets from the 1950s all the way up to the modern era. We're gonna pick our favorites, so let's get started. This 1992 Corvette is pretty regular. What makes it interesting, and the reason it's here, is it is a one-off color. Have you ever heard of melon metallic? It didn't work. They got rid of the melon, they kept the metallic, and used that in the future, but it is very interesting. But our next car, the only colors it cares about are the black and white on a checkered flag. We've got an original vintage race car. This is a 1966 Chevrolet Corvette. This is nicknamed the eight ball race car. This year, we'd actually taken this car to the Amelia Island Concourse de Elegance show where we placed there. Phenomenal car, and we were actually in a race history class which was called the RC2, which was 1958 to 1966. You know, I feel it's a real privilege to take care of this car and, and actually get to take it out and have some fun with it from time to time. 1967, this was campaigned in the SCCA Central Division. This won seven first place races, and this ended up running into 1967 Daytona runoffs, finished in seventh place with a blown head gasket, and they were still running gate speeds of 175 miles an hour. This car looks aerodynamic, it's far from it. You'd actually experience front end lift in a mid-year Corvette over 120 miles an hour. One of the stories that I had heard between Bob Johnson and Doug Bergen at the 1967 runoffs, Bob Johnson felt he was losing control of the steering when it turns out the front end was actually lifting off the ground in the back stretches. So yes, these are absolutely handful, experienced drivers only. The next car from the American Muscle Car Museum collection is only a slightly more subdued Stingray. 63 split window Corvette is to me the most iconic, most recognized Corvette in the world. This was a brand new body style for 1963. And ironically, Zorro Duntoff, one of the fathers of the Corvette, hated the split window. And in 1964, he was managed to get the bar removed on it. This car here is in Riverside Red. This has the L75, which is the 300 horse, 327. To see a 63 split window Fuley Corvette, that was, the, to me, the pinnacle you could achieve in this. You come to the back of the car, some of the research I've done, due to time constraints, just trying to get the car finished, they give Zorro a choice. He says you can either make an independent rear suspension or an IRS, one good way to say IRS, or you can make a trunk in it. And he decided to make an IRS, nicknamed the rubber axle. For how many years it was called, 53 or 62? The straight axle. That's one of my favorite Corvettes of all time. Coming up on the next portion of Top Coat's Magnificent Machines, we'll take a look at bow tie legend Don Yenko, who converted many a tame Chevrolet into a terror on the track. We'll be right back. Top Coat's Magnificent Machines is brought to you by Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping, Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool, and by Top Coat, the best coatings in the world. Welcome back to Top Coat's Magnificent Machines at the American Muscle Car Museum. As far as the eye can see, Yanko Camaros everywhere, but Mark, this one that sits behind us is of particular historic significance. Uh, Don Yanko, as everybody know, uh, had his own Chevrolet dealership in Cannonsburg, PA. Uh, the vehicle we have right here behind us is the first Yanko Camaro ever built. 
1967 Yanko Camaro. Um, this vehicle is actually probably the original prototype vehicle because uh, Don Yanko personally owned this car for over a year and didn't actually sell it finally until he had built his initial run of the 67 Yanko Camaros. So Mark, when we're talking about a Yanko, what identifies it? To the person who is the layman, how would we know that this is a Yanko Camaro? Well, he started off first by putting in the 427 engine. You couldn't order that from General Motors, okay? You went to a normal Chevy dealership, you couldn't get a 427. So Don went ahead and actually ordered 427 engines. He also added the unique hood scoop, which you see, uh, put the 427 letters on it, and he also went, went ahead and had the seats embroidered with the YSC, uh, which actually stood for Yanko Supercats. Uh, one unique feature is Don Yanko, as well as his daughters would tell you, um, he actually didn't put the striping on his cars, his daughters did. And he used to pay his daughters $5 per vehicle for them to actually go ahead and put the factory striping on. So maybe every car they didn't quite put the decals in the exact identical location. And each one is its own unique work of art. Those girls never thought that they would be creating artwork for $5 per vehicle. Actually, that was pretty cheap. He wasn't paying his kids much. <laughs> Don Yanko worked on a lot of different cars, including Vegas like this one. This is a camback, or as I would call it, a Vega station wagon. And what's cool about it is it came with a four-cylinder engine. Don initially wanted to have a turbocharged four-cylinder, but didn't want to have to go through the 50,000-mile test drive to make it factory equipment. So you could order it off the shelf. Bottom line, you have an Offenhauser intake. You're making 200 horsepower in a very lightweight car. You got Yenko badges, and it made it very, very cool. But unfortunately, the Yenko experience came came to an end in 1981. The vehicle right next to me right now is the last Yanko Camaro that Don Yanko ever built. Uh, it's a 1981 Turbo Z Camaro. And the beauty of the turbocharging is, if you remember in the late 70s in the United States, uh, horsepower was really falling off. Don Yanko wanted to get a a higher horsepower vehicle. So by turbocharging the standard 350, he actually could produce 300 horse and get better than 20 miles per gallon. And in 1981, he actually only built 19 of these ever. Uh, this is one of three of the stage one turbo Zs that he actually built, and it's the last vehicle he actually did build. Don Yanko still wanted to make it look unique, so again, you have the hood scoop there, you have the uh, changes in the front fascia, uh, the striping, of course, is a little bit different, and of course, the interior, he would actually put in additional gauges. Uh, so again, uh, it's a, a Camaro that was started off stock, and with the modifications, you can produce a vehicle with a 350 cubic inch at 300 horsepower. Here at the American Muscle Car Museum, there are eight Copo Camaros. Copo stands for Central Office Production Order. Imagine you want something that they don't offer on the showroom. Well, you could go right to the top and order it through your dealership. But just because it's a Copo doesn't mean it's necessarily a Camaro. The uh, window has a post in it, uh, not a hard top. In the day, this was the cheapest, this was the bottom end, entry level. Normally this thing would have a six cylinder three on the column and it was just, you bought that for transportation. When they found out that they'd get the big motor in them and the four speeds and the, and the big rear ends in them, uh, made them a really a desirable car. This car has a 396, 375 horse, going through a four speed into a 410 positive traction. Those numbers tell you right there, it's, it's a drag race car. It's, it's, it's made to run. It might not be a muscle car, but it sure is cool. The 2017 Rolls-Royce Dawn, coach doors and all. Now, if you're gonna drop the kind of coin for a Rolls, you're gonna get all kinds of features, like this great umbrella. One push and you're ready. Costello, Joe Costello. But back in the day, if you wanted things like this, you had to get options. This is a one of one 1959 Apache 3200 series. Has over 30 factory options on it. 
the only one produced that year with that many options on it. This truck has factory air conditioning, power steering, radio, the wide whites, got to have those, and the tartan turquoise paint job is just stunning. You know, two-tone paint was an option. Up front, we've got lots of chrome. We've got the grill guards on the bumpers, chrome bumpers front and rear. Uh, we have the V8 badging, right as you can see on the front of the grill up here. Indicates it's a 283, 230 horsepower, and we go into a hydromatic, which is a four-speed, and that was an option that year also. The long bed, of course, uh, that big cargo space, even the chrome side-mounted rear view mirrors options. Like I say, one of one, 30 factory options. Nice truck. This Gen 4 Camaro is a 2002 GM MG ZL1 supercar, special order by Hendrick Chevrolet in North Carolina. It's got an NHRA approved roll bar. It's got over 600 horsepower and all kinds of work to its LS6 power plant. They had ZL1s back in the day and they have ZL1s now. This 2002 was very important to making that happen, showing Chevrolet that people wanted these high horsepower Camaros. When we return to Topcoat's Magnificent Machines, we'll turn the Wayback Machine to the 50s and check out some of the tantalizing Tri-Fives here at the American Muscle Car Museum. You don't want to miss it. Magnificent Machines at the American Muscle Car Museum. Say the words Bel Air, 150, 210, and Nomad to a Chevrolet connoisseur, and they know immediately that you are talking about the Tri-Fives, the revolutionary automobiles from the mid-50s that have a cult following and a prominent place in this museum. Love my 57 Chevys. Uh, the vehicle right behind us is a 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air convertible. This is a 999 point national show winning vehicle. Uh, the beauty of this car, it's factory fuel injected. That was the first year you had one cubic inch equals one horsepower. You had great performance as well as great fuel economy. The car right behind us is Matador Red. Back in the day, Chevrolet had a lot of different colors. Uh, they even had some special spring promotion colors. So here within the collection, I have four 57 Bel Air convertibles. Uh, beautiful color combinations of Matador Red, uh, Harbor Blue, uh, Tropical Turquoise, and Colonial Cream. I tell people 1957 is my favorite year automobile. The 57 Chevy is continuously voted the number one most recognizable body style anywhere in the world. And they actually drive really good, actually. A friend of mine drives his 57 Chevy convertible quite a bit, and they're actually a nice, smooth riding car. They're not set up for an autocross course, but they're a nice car just going straight down the highway. What we have here is a 1955 Chevrolet Nomad, first year of the new sport wagon, as Chevrolet called it. Uh, the unique thing of this vehicle itself, two doors, very sport stylish, okay? They only made about 8,300 ever. And this vehicle was the first year of the new Chevy V8 overhead valve, 265 cubic inch, 162 horsepower. This vehicle is a national show winning uh, vehicle, 995 points out of 1,000, frame off restored, uh, beautiful regal turquoise, so really striking color combination. Another unique feature on this vehicle, it had what they call a waffle interior, and you can actually look at the interior and it looks like a waffle. So there would be pockets of air trapped on that seat, so you didn't get that sweating effect that you often would get on just straight vinyl seats in the day. We're sitting on the tailgate here. Um, I can tell you that I grew up in a family of station wagons, but in the back you would have, you know, the five kids, the dog, the cat, two parents, and usually back there you'd have a couple pillows and a Coleman cooler. Great family vehicles, lots of great memories, uh, really beautiful vehicles today. You don't see cars like this anymore. You know, one of the questions we get asked a lot with Top Coat is, how does it actually work? You know, there's a lot of benefits and a lot of key features to this product and how we designed it. You know, whether it was for the paints, plastics, we all know that we pioneered this whole industry for one product does it all. But at the end of the day, 
it's it's this how does it work Mike you want to explain to everyone yeah and as we've done many times like if you were to zoom in on any of these surfaces with an electron microscope I mean it would look like the Grand Canyon because of all the imperfections that are unseen to the naked naked eye you yeah know? so so f11 when it was formulated you know we made it where it was microscopic and can feel those imperfections and make the surface smooth where things will not adhere to it yeah so all that and fall out not sticky not right. actually filling in right right so when dirt gets on that surface it easily wipes away without harming the finish which is remarkable totally and, and not only that you're, like you said you're not hurting it you're not affecting anything but you're keeping everything in like new condition to boot correct and the more you use it gets better right right and using a water-based eco-friendly formula yeah how do you get yeah yeah that's the highest <laughs> the tech secret. you can get yeah <laughs> you know so but not only you know this vinyl but the paint the chrome and no heat issues even the motor right right and you get that easy release non-stick coating characteristic that everything just wipes right off that's especially right. the more you use that's right but if you want to learn more you can go to our website at topcoat.tv when you consider the size and scope of the American Muscle Car Museum, you have to wonder how they keep over 300 vehicles in top-notch condition. We'll go behind the curtain and meet the magicians who maintain this collection when Topcoat's Magnificent Machines returns in a moment. Topcoat's Magnificent Machines is brought to you by Brothers Truck Parts, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration. AP Laser, leading the way. And by Topcoat, make life easier. Welcome back to Topcoat's Magnificent Machines at the American Muscle Car Museum. There are over 300 cars here at the American Muscle Car Museum. Here with Ed and Jerry. Ed, that's got to be a lot of maintenance work. It's a lot of work. It's something, a program we've developed over time between Jerry, myself, and Todd. Even the way we care for cars has evolved from when we've done it 10 and 15 years ago till now. Uh, we bring each car in at least a minimum annually. We have a nine-page check sheet uh, breaking down to four parts. The first part is a pre-check, second part is performance, and then a couple of temp cycles in it third part is a post check and then the fourth part is a detail it gives us a nice baseline between the three of us Jerry Todd and myself we have over 120 years of experience in car restoration or car modification I mean we all have our strengths with Jerry with the old cars me is more in the paint and body and detailing and Todd with the newer fuel injection cars and each time we get to bring those cars in it refreshes us and we get to learn a little bit of history about the cars and we also get to share that history with other people that come in the museum and Jerry tell me a little bit about your job responsibilities I have a, a long history with the older cars simply because of my age. I grew up with these cars. I raced them on the street, all my buddies, I mean, we knew these cars, you know. So we kind of decided that I'd take the older cars and run them through here. And, and, and it works out really good. I, I'm real comfortable with these older cars. I do know the newer cars to a certain extent, but uh, the old cars are my thing. Uh, one thing we really like to try to do say like with Satellite High School or some of the local high school mechanical programs is involve the younger generation. Get them out here, get them on a tour, show them some of the things we're doing, and just try to get that next generation to get the passion going. The American Muscle Car Museum is a non-profit 501c3 museum and is not open to the public, but each year it hosts educational tours as well as numerous fundraisers for local and national charities. Now let's take a look at our last Chevrolets, a pair of stealthy street fighters from the 60s. Now Jerry, we all know a bubble top when we see one, but this is not a 1961 Impala, this is a 62 Bel Air. Tell us about it. The car right here is a factory race car. It is a 1962 Bel Air, it is a bubble top. Don Nicholson, uh, Frank Sanders, uh, Grumpy Jenkins, some of these guys had some fabulous year in 1961. So Chevrolet was pressured by the public to keep producing this 409 and put it in anything. This car has a 409, 409 horsepower, two four barrels, run it in a four-speed transmission into a 411 positive traction gear. Made for one thing, drag racing has the uh, wide wheels. Uh, back in the day, they were the station wagon wheel because a lot of horsepower, more tire. Had the sun tack on the, on the steering column, you know. Uh, it, was, it was race ready. Great example of 1962 Bel Air race car. 
Back in the day, 65, 66, the Mopars were really kicking everybody pretty hard. So Baton Chevrolet decided we're gonna order a race car. And this is a lightweight Biscayne. It is a radio delete car. They ordered the car with the old 72 427 in it, 425 horsepower. Running it through a close ratio box with a 410 positive traction gear under it. Other than the badging on the front up there, when you saw this, you figured it was some little old lady going to the grocery store. But as soon as you saw the badging, you knew immediately what it was. They raced the car about two and a half years, and it was really doing some serious racing out there. They decided to move on, get out of the racing, and it went into storage for a long time. Then it was found in about 2014 or so. All the paperwork, all the numbers are correct. Did a frame off restoration, it was a four year process. The upholstery in this car was done exactly as pattern wise for that year. I mean, it is correct the way the car came out of the factory. It's nothing fancy, no rolling pleat, none of that kind of stuff. Just, just a great example of a race car. We have one last bit of business, choosing Top Coat's top pick and it goes to the 1963 Corvette split window coupe. The Stingray revolutionized the Corvette, and even though it was only offered for one year, that split window style has proven to be an automotive icon. I hope you've enjoyed this Chevy cavalcade during our visit to the American Muscle Car Museum as much as I did, and you will definitely want to join us next week when we visit the collection of antique and classic cars belonging to Big Daddy Don Garlitz. The hits just keep on coming here on Topcoat's Magnificent Machines.